Shalom, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so recently when we talked about the the eclipse, and uh, I, this this is amazing. You got you got to see this video. Okay, so during the eclipse, I was telling you guys that um, you know, and, and a solar eclipse only only takes a few minutes to take place, and so I had posed this question over many years of what was blocking out the sun during the crucifixion of Yeshua. And lo and behold, this, and I got to tell you, this is the first time I've ever seen anybody else pose the same question. And this guy goes and produces all of the historical records that prove what I've been telling you guys, that something else blocked out the sun during the crucifixion. It was not the moon. It was not the moon. The moon does not block out the sun for three hours. And by the way, it, there's there's many historical records of what took place on that day, and from Chinese records to Egyptian records to Roman records, that we can see that it is, this was something that was not normal. Right. And it took place and it caught the people off guard. It was not it was not something that was calculated by the astronomical calendar. OK, so please watch this presentation by this this channel. I'm going to debut here in this mirror and I would encourage you to go and subscribe. These guys are locked on. I don't know where they got this information, but it's a confirmation of what I've been telling you. And I'm thankful for them. So look, let's watch this video together. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour, because the sun was obscured. Because the sun was obscured. And the veil of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, Father, Father into your hands I commit my spirit. I commit my spirit. I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. This record is dated 31 AD and it's in the history of the latter Han dynasty and there's the reference. The imperial edict reads yin and yang have mistakenly switched and the sun and the moon were eclipsed. The sins of all the people are now on one man. Pardon is proclaimed to all under heaven. They knew nothing about Jesus, and this is dated 31 AD. They knew nothing about Jesus Christ, but in their soul, in their spirit, they felt 
that this sudden eclipse of the sun unexpectedly meant that the sins of people were pardoned and had been placed on one man. That's amazing, isn't it? And then it goes on to say, the eclipse on the day of Gui High, man from heaven died. How did the Chinese people know this? There in China, Jesus Christ was being crucified in Jerusalem. They knew nothing about it. But in their records, when they saw this eclipse, these imperial astronomers wrote, man from heaven has died. There is still some debate over whether this darkness was supernatural or simply an eclipse. Interestingly, the Greek pagan historian Thallus confirms the biblical account that darkness totally covered the land at the time of the Passover in the year we now call AD 32. Now, Thallus published this information only 20 years after the resurrection of Christ. While this is a powerful extra-biblical historical confirmation of what happened that day, he believed this darkness to be a result of a solar eclipse. Thallus, however, was no astronomer. A North African Christian leader by the name of Julius Africanus mentions Thallus in his writings in AD 215. Julius says, This darkness Thallus calls, as appears to me without reason, an eclipse of the sun. For the Hebrews celebrate the Passover on the 14th day, according to the moon and the passion of our Savior, falls on the day before the Passover. But an eclipse of the sun takes place only when the moon comes under the sun. Any astronomer will tell you the same thing. A natural solar eclipse was not possible on the day of Christ's crucifixion. You guys, and I've said this over and over again, for a solar eclipse to happen at Passover time is an astronomical anomaly. If anything, you can have a blood moon, by the way, and you will see in this presentation that that also happened. It's impossible to have a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse in the same 24-hour period. What does this mean? This means that some foreign object blotted out the sun for three hours, and then that night, there was also a blood moon that took place. This would have stood out to all of those who were witnesses as a sign. This would not have been normal. It would not be predicted by Kepler's law of planetary motion. Okay, This would have been une unexpected. Think about that. Look at the histor historical records here. This account of Jesus' death in Luke 23 leaves us wondering what exactly caused this darkness. Can this darkness be explained astronomically, or was it a completely supernatural event? Jumping immediately into an astronomical explanation would lead us to suspect a solar eclipse. While an eclipse of the sun may seem to make the most sense, it does not line up with the timing of Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus was crucified at the time of the Passover when the moon was in its full phase. Since the moon was at the exact opposite side of its orbit, a solar eclipse would not be possible. There is also another problem with the solar eclipse theory. The Bible says that the darkness lasted three hours, but the maximum time that the sun can be eclipsed is only eight minutes. Since this concept of having darkness while the sun is still shining cannot be explained astronomically, we can come to the conclusion that's no moon. One of those weird stories is the darkness that happened during Jesus' crucifixion, which is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Here's Mark's account. He writes, And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And we're not even sure what the darkness was. Was it a solar eclipse or some other natural or supernatural occurrence? Tertullian, writing in 197 AD, says this event also was in the Roman archives. Maybe he was referring to Thallus' writings. It's a very interesting question. Tertullian wrote, In the same hour too, the light of day was withdrawn, when the sun at that very time was in his meridian blaze. Those who were not aware that this had been predicted about Christ no doubt thought it was an eclipse. You yourselves have the account of the world portent still in your archives. Tertullian does mention Thallus by name in the same work in his Apologies. It takes a lot of guts or a lot of stupidity to challenge skeptics to look into the archives to corroborate this event if it didn't happen. For these reasons, it seems more probable than not that Thallus' comment can be taken as the earliest evidence that we have for Jesus outside of the New Testament. And it's an early confirmation of something that happened during Jesus' crucifixion. For skeptics not to give this evidence some mention seems a little too convenient if you ask me. One of the first historians of this period, 
Rufinus of Aquilia, as a part of the work he completed on Eusebius's ecclesiastical history, contains a section that describes a defense given to Maximus by Lucian of Antioch before his death by martyrdom in 312 AD. This Roman writer was quite certain that the darkness described by the Gospels that is said to have happened at the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth was a part of the historical record of the Roman archives. Search your writings and you shall find that in Pilate's time, when Christ suffered, the sun was suddenly withdrawn and darkness followed. Roman historian Rufinus of Aquilia. All right, so we just saw Chinese and Roman historians recording this event that took place that they could not explain. It was not an object called the moon that passed between the, the sun and the earth. It was something else. It was unexpected. It was not, it was not something who, that could be calculated. And so this was something that stood out. Rufinus would never have asked the Romans to search their records for the account of the darkness if it didn't happen. This statement not only confirms the New Testament account that darkness occurred at Jesus' crucifixion, but also serves as proof that documents other than the Bible exist in the records of antiquity, which describe the crucifixion of a man called the Christ. During the reign of Tiberius Caesar, a second century record from Phlegon of Tralles describes a complete solar eclipse that happened during the time of the full moon, exactly as the gospels record from the sixth to the ninth hour. In the fourth year of the 202nd Olympiad, there was a great eclipse of the sun, greater than had ever been known before. For at the sixth hour, the day was changed into night and the stars were seen in the heavens. An earthquake occurred in Bithynia and overthrew a great part of the city of Nicaea, Phlegon of Tralles, the extant fragments of the Olympiads of Phlegon. Though often contested among scholars, Pontius Pilate is alleged to have sent the following report to Tiberius, Emperor of Rome. And when he had been crucified, there was darkness over the whole earth, the sun having been completely hidden and the heaven appearing dark, so that the stars appeared, but had at the same time their brightness darkened, as I suppose your reverence is not ignorant of, because in all the world they lighted lamps from the sixth hour until evening. And the moon, being like blood, did not shine the whole night, and yet she happened to be at the full. Pontius Pilate to Tiberius in a bid. The moon being like blood would indicate a lunar eclipse was happening simultaneously guys, as the sun. We just saw Tiberius Pilate, the pilot of the time, telling you that there was something that happened, and then there was a blood moon that happened at then. There's, there's no way. Research that. There's no way you can have a solar eclipse and a blood moon in a, in a 24 hour period. Something else happened. The sun was darkened, a claim that is attested to by other historians at the time, such as Phlegon. But regardless if these words were written by the eyewitness of Pilate, the descriptions of the sun being hidden or obscured during the time of the full moon phase isn't unique to that document. Jesus voluntarily gave himself over to the passion, but through the impiety of the Jews, was apprehended and nailed to the cross, as a very great earthquake took place throughout the world. Rocks upon mountains were split, and a great many parts of the largest cities fell by this extraordinary violence. On the same day also, at the sixth hour of the day, the sun was entirely obscured and a loathsome night suddenly overshadowed the land, as it was said, an impious age feared eternal night. Moreover, it was quite clear that neither the moon nor the clouds stood in the way of the light of the sun. So it is reported that on that day the moon, being 14 days old, with the entire region of the heavens thrown in between, was farthest from the sight of the sun. The stars throughout the entire sky shone, then in the hours of the day, or rather on that terrible night. To this, not only the authority of the Holy Gospels attest, but even some books of the Greeks. Christian historian Paulus Orosius. 
Dionysius the Areopagite remains one of the most enigmatic figures of the early Christianity. He was a Greek author, Christian theologian, and Neoplatonic philosopher of the late 5th to early 6th century. The Dionysian writings were given great authority among subsequent theological writings in both the East and the West. He describes his first-hand account of the sun's darkening during Christ's crucifixion as follows. How, for instance, when we were staying in Heliopolis on a certain sixth day and about the sixth hour, the sun, to our great surprise, became obscured through the moon passing over it, not because it is a god, but because a creature of God, when its very true light was setting, could not bear to shine. For when the whole orb had been throughout darkened by a black mist of darkness and the sun's disk had begun again to be purged and to shine anew, then taking the table of Philip Aridaeus and contemplating the orbs of heaven, we learned what was otherwise well known, that an eclipse of the sun could not at that time occur. Next, we observed that the moon approached the sun from the east and intercepted its rays until it covered the whole, whereas at other times it used to approach from the west. Further also, we noted that when it had reached the extreme edge of the sun and had covered the whole orb, that it then went back towards the east, although that was a time which called neither for the presence of the moon nor for the conjunction of the sun. Now, I ask you, how is that mathematically impossible? Uh, possible? How is that even possible that this happened? Can you can you imagine being being there on that day, and the Kepler's laws of planetary motion are are something that can, it can be calculated. They knew when eclipses would happen and things like this, and they can see that it was not the moon. Hear me. I've been telling you for a couple of years, it was not the moon that blotted out the sun. It was something else. The Jews call it Nibiru. Some will call it Planet X. The Bible in Book of Revelation calls it Wormwood. Something has happened over and over again in our history that's had an effect on our Earth. And it's not done yet. It's not done yet, you guys. That's the point of this. I'm excited to see that West Blaze, and that's the channel. We're gonna we're gonna put that down in the description. Go and subscribe there. Has produced the information that I've been telling you, the historical account. That means they've been studying, they've been looking, searching, and 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 finding the information that proves what I've told you. I therefore, O oh treasury of manifold learning since I was incapable of understanding so great a mystery, thus address thee. What thinkest thou of this thing, O Apollophanes, mirror of learning? Of what mysteries do these unaccustomed portents appear to you to be indications? Thou then, with inspired lips, rather than with speech of human voice, these are, O excellent Dionysius, thou saidst, changes of things divine. Dionysius, the Areopagite. According to this report, an object that could be mistaken for the moon eclipsed the face of the sun on the day Christ was crucified. However, it was confirmed that it could not have been the moon. Let's examine some of the other observations Dionysius recorded. Next, we observed that the moon approached the sun from the east and intercepted its rays until it covered the whole, whereas at other times it used to approach from the west. In this excerpt, the author mentions that the solar eclipses they were accustomed to would present a shadow which would move from west to east, whereas the sun and moon always travel from east to west across the sky. Listen as alleged scientists attempt to explain this phenomenon. I heard that the shadow is moving from west to east, but how can that be possible since the moon moves from east to west? Hi, I'm Sarah Kaplan and I'll be answering for science today. On August 21st, something really exciting is going to happen in the US, a total solar eclipse. 
This is what happens when the moon passes in front of the sun and it's going to cast a shadow that travels across the United States all the way from the Oregon coast to South Carolina. But wait, if the moon rises in the east and sets in the west, why is the shadow moving from west to east? This is actually a really big question and even astrophysicists sometimes have trouble answering it. Let's see if any of my colleagues can help. So we're trying to figure out why is it that the eclipse goes from west to east if the moon rises in the east and sets in the west? If we're on the planet and we're looking up, shouldn't they be traveling the same direction? Yeah, I think so. Well, it has to do with rotation and okay. revolution. Yes. And The Earth is spinning this way, so and the moon is spinning the same way ah, that the Earth is orbiting, but I the see. Earth is spinning faster than the moon is orbiting. See, this is why I stick to biology. Right, okay. Angela's the Earth, so I, I'm spinning this way, right? But you're running really faster. Yeah, exactly. Clearly, we need to consult an expert on this. So we went to NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland to talk to Alex Young, a NASA scientist, and ask for his best explanation. To try to make it as simple as possible, it really boils down to how fast the Earth is spinning and how fast the moon is orbiting around it. The moon is orbiting about twice as fast as this, the Earth is spinning. So if we're looking down on the Earth and we're at the moon, we see the Earth spinning, but the moon is moving faster. And so that shadow is moving across the Earth this way, which is west to east. Simple, right? Further also, we noted that when it had reached the extreme edge of the sun and had covered the whole orb, that it then went back towards the east. This fascinating claim by Dionysius is very similar to what can be seen in the following clip from Investigating Babylon by Kingdom in Context. This is a partial solar eclipse that I so, shot with so, both my telescope. So you guys, let me just say here, that and what is being described here, mathematically and astronomically, would, would be called a retrograde. That would be happening at the time of the alignment of the, of the world and with this planet X, as we will call it at this moment, <laughs> and that it that it's it, it's it's moved across the surface of the sun and moved back across. This is probably why it took three hours. And it was in a retrograde motion at this point. Now, from known astronomics and and the mathematical, you know, we we can look back and and see in time when and what was taking place. There was no um, new moon taking place, and that's the only time you can have a solar eclipse is at new moon time. You cannot have one at full moon time. It was something else that passed between the Earth and the sun and blocked out the sun okay that's what i'm hoping you can see here in this it's mathematically impossible that it was the moon that blocked out the sun you guys it was something else and i believe that the bible codes are very clear on what that was and a telephoto lens the reason i'm showing this is because you've got to consider that we are told the moon is roughly 400 times smaller than the sun, yet the sun is 400 times more distant, so we see this perfect kind of fit when they are aligned. And when you consider if it's even possible statistically, that kind of demonstrate that it is damn near impossible for random events to have caused this kind of alignment. Um, you know, we need to question these things. We need. I'm going to back this up a little bit. He's filming an eclipse with a different type of filter that way. That's why the sun looks so diminished in light. It seems like as soon as the eclipse starts coming in, it's like it changes trajectory and starts going back out, which I think is amazing. If he literally was filming it from his point of view on the land where he lives and filming this eclipse in the sky at, at just the right angle to catch it on its circumference uh, revolution in, in this firmament to where if it's the moon, I'm gonna back it up guys and so you can watch this again see the motion in the path of the moon it's coming down at a diagonal like two o'clock and then it's going to stop and go back up towards 12 o'clock do you see that <laughs> it's 
it changed. Came down and stopped and it went up. It's not the moon, guys. It's not the moon, guys. It's not the moon, guys. That's no moon. That's no moon. Is reaching totality. Let's uh, take a live look at uh, Isabel and Taylor's shot right now. They have the most incredible yeah. view. What did we just witness? I mean, that's why I put my sunglasses back on in preparation of the sun coming back out. But this was unreal something i never imagined we saw i don't know what kind of star or if it was a planet but we saw in addition to the moon over the sun we saw a planet or a star it looks so we're going to cut away from wfff i love that we're hearing the reactions but apparently i do have one more shot of totality to bring you um this going back to our nasa telescope partner feeds and there we just entered it wherever this particular telescope is located. I just saw them take their filter off. And so here we are witnessing, this is the, the final shot that I have for you on this live stream of the Great American Eclipse, this April 8th, 2024, totality across the US. The gospels insist that the sun was obscured for three hours when the Messiah hung on the cross. Was this the result of a solar eclipse, which proved that the moon is not the cause? Let me know your thoughts and findings in the comments. Then be sure to check out these related presentations. Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. In this video, I wanted to share something with you that's really quite remarkable. While this might be old news to some of you, it may help others of you understand and solidify in your minds why Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And in context to the Face Like the Sun channel and many others who oppose and expose the New World Order, this dark elite globalist faction, this insight may be the nail in the coffin to turn you away from what the world sells you. In other words, repent and accept Jesus Christ into your hearts as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, to start off here, the name Yeshua consists of four Hebrew letters from right to left. You have the Yud, the Shin, the Vav, or the wow, and the ayin. You might have heard in churches that the name Jesus means he saves or salvation, and that's pretty accurate, but the Hebrew language also has some deeper meanings that are quite awesome when you begin to uncover them. Hebrew letters contain within it pictographs. A pictograph is basically a pictorial symbol for a word or phrase, and they were actually used as the earliest known form of writing and examples have been discovered in Egypt and Mesopotamia from before 3000 BC. So basically each letter represents more than just that letter. So let's break down the four Hebrew letters for Yeshua. First, the Yud. According to a couple different sources, the Yud in pictograph form represents an arm, hand, work, or deed. The meaning of the letter is work, throw, or worship, but Blue Letter Bible suggests that the Yud not only represents the hand, but also strength and power, but mainly it represents a hand or an arm, and that's what the original form of Yud looks like. It looks kind of like an arm. Next we have Shin, which in pictograph form means to eat or consume or destroy. The form of the letter looks like two front teeth, but most pictographs suggest that this means to consume or destroy. Then we move on to the vav, or the wow, depending on the form. The pictograph here means nail, or tent peg, or to connect two things. The suggestion that it is building something. In fact, some translations of the pictograph suggests that it means an establishment, or something that's built or constructed. And then finally, ayin, which simply means I, to see or to experience. So based on these four Hebrew letters, when we put it together, one can conclude, it doesn't have to be this, but you can conclude that Jesus' name in the Hebrew, Yahshua, means the hand that destroys the establishment of the eye. In other words, this whole new world order thing that's being built all around us, while we can resist it for a time and we can expose what we can, 
guess who will ultimately destroy it? That's right, it's Yeshua, Jesus Christ. All right, you guys, so a really good video from West Blaze. I'm going to leave the link down below for you guys to go to subscribe to him, but also a cameo from Face Like the Sun uh, from Gans. Very good. This documentary contains references to record. Very good presentation of something that I've been, I've been trying to, to, to tell you guys for a couple of years now that something else blocked out the sun. This is why we look for the words Nibiru and Planet X and Wormwood and things like that, because there's something else going on there. All right. So that's why I wanted to bring this video to you uh, again. Uh, kudos to West Blaze Music is the channel. And um, that, that brother is a flat earther. And uh, that is an excellent presentation that he just brought to us. And I wanted to, I, I saw that come across my feed today. I wanted to bring that to you and uh, bring it to you, your uh, understanding. And also, pr you know, promote uh, Wes's channel as well. So go subscribe to him. And uh, yeah, confirmation right there, you guys. Shalom to you. We'll see you in the next video.